of being uh, active in the various conferences and uh, Chaplain Corps, Regent Staff College, what have you, is we get to meet a lot of neat people. Uh, I'm not sure the first time that I met Chaplain Poland, but he was serving down in Missouri at the time. And we got along famously, and even more so because he has a very nice wife who is a, a, a CDI for us and a unit commander. So we've gotten along very well. Uh, I am honored that Chaplain Poland has agreed to be part of tonight's presentation, and we look forward to hearing the perspective of Volunteer University from one of the uh, level, well, level two chair for online. With that, I'll be quiet. Have at it, Dave. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, I am Chaplain Lieutenant Colonel David Poland, and I'm going to talk to you about my role in Volunteer University and probably echo some of the things that Colonel A said. Uh, it was interesting. Chaplain Minor originally asked me to write a little about my role when he saw my signature block and an email included that Chair of Level 2 for Online Learning Programs and Volunteer University. Uh, for the National Conference, they asked us to do a little bit of a bio, and so this is the bio that I did up for them along with uh, the picture that's there. But teaching has been a part of my genes. My father, my grandfather, sister, brother, uh, all were in public school education. Uh, I started that direction and was certified as a substitute teacher, spent some time teaching. And almost every position I've ever had in any organization I've been with uh, since I've gotten out of high school. Uh, I would tell my SLS students that I'm overeducated. I started toward a degree in education and the Army actually gave me an order after three years of uh, college toward education to change to engineering and then made sure that I got an uh, associates and bachelors in electronic engineering and a master's in engineering management. After I retired from the Army, I went to McDonnell Douglas in St. Louis and they said, go to college. And I said, I didn't want to be an engineer to begin with. They said, oh, we don't care what you take. And so I took theology, counseling, psychology, knocked out a master's and then a doctorate in counseling and a doctorate in ministry and was doing postdoctorate work in leadership for nonprofit organizations when Ecclesiastes 12.12, the last half of that verse says something about uh, too much learning uh, tires the body, not the mind. And that kicked in and, and I dropped out. But I did spend most of the last decade teaching uh, the online SLS, and that's sort of what lined me up to end up as a chair in uh, the new volunteer university. And you could see from the slide that Chaplain or that uh, Colonel Lay had up, I was originally slated to be the chair for level four online. And we talked about all my years with SLS and teaching level two, and we did a switch. So I moved down to level two, level three moved up to level four, the old other level two moved up to level three, and, and so that's why things weren't lined up. So what do I do? Well, she already told you about the organization, the way it's divided with a provost in an online school and an on-site school and each school has a chair for each of the five levels. And obviously I'm the chair for level two. I thought it was interesting, by the way, I have not tried to look at the backgrounds of everybody uh, that are chairs or assistant chairs, deans, et cetera. But I do recognize that as far as I know, I'm the only chaplain, but there are CDIs, the online dean is a CDI. The level two chair for on-site is a CDI. And a couple of the assistant chairs are CDIs that I know of, and there may be more. So we're re well represented. 
Uh, it also is interesting. I always say there's no coincidences, only God incidences. The level two chair for on site is Lieutenant Colonel Mike Bryant. Those of you that were in the GLR CCRSC know that he was the director of that. I was on his staff, so we already have a history of working together. My job starts in one way with the instructors and the, the assistants. So I have to review or interview all of the applicants. I have to moderate their training. I have to go through the process of getting them onboarded and take care of um, just for level two online. And this is kind of interesting how the system is set up, but if we have a, a person who already has their level five and they're coming in to teach level five, but they also want to teach level four, three, two, and one, then the chair at each level has to bring them in. And if they want to teach online and on site, then the chair for each modality has to bring them in. So I have to approve everyone who will ever teach, or at least in the next year, will teach online level two. Um, and so I go through all of those. Uh, right now, I'm currently working through, it looks like for the next year, I'm going to need a total of 26 instructors and 26 assistants. And uh, so far, I've worked through only about 30. Uh, yesterday, I submitted another 30-some names to go through the vetting process. And Colonel A mentioned that a little bit. You have to be approved by your commander, uh, wing commander, region commander as well, in order to become an instructor or assistant. And so after we go through and look at applications, we move those names in. And I have been looking almost exclusively at people that currently have level two. Um, so that's what I've been doing. Uh, but I'm also starting to get lists of instructors from other levels who wish to teach level two as well. Uh, and so I'm processing them as well. I have to manage that whole pool and then as assistants gain experience and get their one year at level two, uh, I have to see if they're ready to move them into the instructor tier. And when Colonel A was showing you access and so forth, instructors have more access on grading and entering gradings than assistants do. So it really does make a difference there. Uh, I also have to assess and report on the instructor satisfaction surveys. Then I have to manage the classes and the course materials. And I do this in a couple ways. Uh, first of all, when people say, I want to start level two online, they go into e-services, professional levels, cohort, and request, and they request level two. And I turn around and I say, okay, uh, the 4th of August, I'm going to start a cohort. Who has asked to be in the cohort? And I assign instructors and assistants, and I assign students into that cohort. Then I have to have oversight on, again, we're teaching individual model, modules. So I have oversight on the assessments of the modules. And if we have a, a course that we think should have been taught in level one, or maybe it's too advanced, it ought to be moved up to level three, I would have to approve that change. If somebody else says, let's move a class into level two, I would have to review that. Um, I also have to manage module changes within level two. And this is something that's kind of interesting, if somebody notices a typographical error in a slide, uh, they can let me know and I can go in and make that change. If it's something in the student guide 
or in the instructor guide that's an error that would affect both online and on site, then I have to go to the on site uh, level two chair, Colonel Bryant, who again, I've, I've been working with on the CCRSC. So we already have a relationship, but the two of us have to agree how to fix it. And then we notify and we go in and make the changes. Um, so that's available for us to do, but it's also a responsibility that we have to have to do that. Uh, and then finally, I have to communicate program and organizational changes as they occur uh, within. A uh, little more, by the way, on the module changes. You know, Civil Air Patrol never changes regulations or anything, but should that happen, then we have to go in and update the material accordingly. And I can say I haven't spent as much time looking at instructors in the last six weeks because I've been reading all of the course material for level two, all of the student guides, the instructor guides, all of the presentations on uh, access, going through all of the test and the study uh, information on access, looking for typographical errors, changed regulations, et cetera. And I know that I couldn't have found them all just because we changed too much. Um, and then one of the other jobs of a chair is to promote the volunteer university. And Colonel Lay has mentioned that a little bit, but I see a real need for the chaplain corps to be actively involved in value. In addition to seeing just being a staff officer in your units, Colonel Lay told you that every level has modules on core values. And I personally believe that we as the chaplain corps need to take ownership, not just of the content of those modules, but in the instruction of those modules. And so I think every time core values is taught at any level uh, at any organization that it should be a chaplain or a character development instructor that is there to deliver that content. And Colonel Lay mentioned the level one. And I will go back and, and say that again. We need certified instructors for level one. She told you there are over 1,300 units in Civil Air Patrol. We need certified on-site instructors for level one at every unit. And because every unit's going to be required to have someone from the chaplain corps on their duty roster, I see this as a way that we can really assess or assist our units. And it's something that I hope that you all do. And by the way, I have noticed as I've been reviewing uh, instructors for level two online that I have processed uh, several chaplains and CDIs. I just wanna see everybody go to the education and training website, find the link for application and do that. Um, a way to support our units, but a way to keep ourselves active. Chaplain A talked about the four paths and why we have them. I'm not gonna spend any more time on that, except again, as she said, they're military cadets, professional or mission critical, advanced promotions and all others, which we just title new. What I would ask you to do, and I, with the way my screen is set up, I can't see a chat box at all, but uh, I'm assuming that uh, Chaplain Williams will be able to capture the chat box for me. I would be interested in what your background is. And I'd like you just to go in and put your name and a number. Now, if there's a couple of you in the Chaplain Corps with the same last name, and I know that my wife is sitting in another room listening to this, 
uh, I would put Poland D and the number three, because when I first became a senior member back in 1977, I was active Army at the time. I had been a cadet in the Missouri wing in the 60s, and I was coming in at the time with a mission critical skill because of the fact that I had uh, an FCC license for repairing radios. And so I would have used a three. Uh, somebody pointed out in one of the instructor training classes where I used this that I forgot military and professional mission critical. Uh, and so Chaplain Williams, I mentioned to you that I had not changed my slides since I sent them to you. I forgot that I have changed this one by adding line eight. Um, military and professional, uh, if that fits you, use an eight. But go ahead and enter those into the chat. I'll be interested in looking at them later. I wanted to give you examples of the paths. Again, Colonel A talked about it a little bit. These are just some random courses. Everybody takes unit activities. Uh, cap uniforms, as she mentioned, is different from the uniforms that the new members and the professional, those coming in with mission critical, et cetera, skills would take. But cadets also have to understand the uniform differences between what they wear as a cadet and what we wear as senior members. For drill, uh, those that don't have a background in drill will get an hour-long course in basic drill, and I happen to know that that's one of the classes that's not automated, that's a moderated course. Uh, not sure how I'm going to moderate it online. Maybe I'll have them stand in front of their camera and do some basic drill. We'll, we'll work that out. Cadets do get that waived, and the military get differences in all the drills because those of us that are familiar with the different branches know that there are a lot of differences in the drill. For core values, if you have certain military education, that's the PME, uh, that course could be waived for you. For a cadet, if you've reached milestone two, three, four, five, core values is waived. For members of the Chaplain Corps, if you've had the CCRSC before you get to this module, the module is waived and then it's there. One of the differences that Colonel A didn't talk about too much that might be larger than having the four paths is that level two is actually divided into two parts. Part one is kind of a basic what you need in order to be a productive senior member. And I'll go through and show you what those actual modules are. If you had paid attention to her charts, she had the level two charts broken out as part one and part two, but didn't explain those. But part one, what you need to be a, a productive senior member. And then part two, what you need to be prepared for further promotion and for better serving your unit. But there's another twist to the part one, part two. And so I've taken the standard chart, modified it the way a lot of people do, but I've done that so that I can highlight that level two, part one, is where you select your specialty track and your duty position. But I want you to notice that you are not eligible for your first promotion until you have completed level two, part one. Uh, it used to be once you completed level one. Now, this is a real impact to the chaplain corps because we know that when a chaplain is approved and appointed a chaplain, that there is an automatic promotion that goes along with that. If they're wavered, it might be first lieutenant. Otherwise, it's a captain. That can promotion can only be made if you have completed level two, part one. Otherwise, you will remain a senior member. The same thing is true for cadets that are transferring uh, from cadet status to senior member. Uh, it's true for pilots. You name it, nobody gets promoted until they complete level two, part one. 
And again, I'll show you what those modules are they follow. The rest of level two, part two, has everything else. That's where you earn your technician rating. Sometime during level two, you complete your Jaeger award and you get your Benjamin Davis. The, the grades that I have, the insignia, are only for what I might consider duty performance promotions. Uh, of course, uh, after you complete level two, part one, if you're a uh, former military and you're getting a promotion to senior master sergeant, you would get that. Chaplains would get either first lieutenant or captains. I, I just didn't have enough room to put all of the possibilities up there. Um, but I put this chart up specifically so that you can see the impact of part one. And wing chaplains, region chaplains, as you're processing chaplains and CDIs in, or candidates for chaplains and, and CDIs, you need to make clear to them the importance of starting level two, part one. So level two, part one has a core. This is the, the four core courses. Uh, again, accountability and responsibility if you right, have the right military background. Uh, you'll get a waiver there. If you've got uh, Milestone 4 or Milestone 5 as a cadet, you'll get a waiver for unit organization. Then we break into the four paths. Um, CAP Customs and Courtesies, how those compare to the other branches of the military, and there's some real interesting changes. I don't know how many of you recognize that CAP even varies from the U.S. Air Force. And this came up at the Ohio Wing encampment last summer. A group of officers standing around talking and an individual walked up and everybody expected the senior officer in the group to be the one that was saluted. And they were surprised when a cadet walked up and said, excuse me, but you're all supposed to respond. And they said, well, no, no, just the senior officer. And the cadet said, you need to take a look at cap pamphlet on drill, go to paragraph such and such. He had it up on his phone. And they sat there and read that every officer is supposed to respond to that individual coming up. And then it gave, gives instructions for if you were the senior officer in the group, this is what you do. If you're junior to the senior, but senior to the person approaching, this is what you do. If you're junior to the person approaching, and, and that's all there, but that's not the Air Force way. And, and so that class helps the former military understand some of those changes. I already talked about uniforms earlier. That was one of them, bringing your service. Colonel A talked about that. Uh, you'll notice that cadets have more classes, but I'll tell you their classes are all 15 to 30 minutes, where most of the other classes here are 60-minute classes. So while it looks like they're doing more, in the long run, it works out to about the same length of time. That's what you need to be a productive senior member. Part two. We have core classes. Again, a lot more of these can be waived than the part one classes can be waived. And you can take a look at some of those. Again, those with numbers, those are the milestones. Rather than my putting in the milestone names, I could do it this way and keep the chart shorter. And then this is the part two path courses. Notice what happens with the cadets. We had them take classes in part one that the rest of the people are taking in part two. And so cadets can get through the path portion of part two quite a bit faster than other people can. Uh, but again, the same things hold. Um, As Colonel A mentioned, online or on site, the choice is completely yours. You can mix and match. You can sign up to take a couple modules online and then find out that your group or your wing is having a training event 
and you can knock out six modules in a day on a Saturday or a Sunday at a training event, and you can do that, and you might find another wing is going to be doing a Zoom meeting and offering six or eight modules, and you can do that however it works your individual schedule. I've noticed some people asking what kind of a commitment are you making? Well, I've been playing with that. I assigned course numbers. Those mean something to me. They don't mean anything to you. Uh, phase one, M1 is moderated modules. A1 are automated modules. So I look at four to five weeks to finish phase one. If you're taking the classes online, and take classes when I recommend them. Uh, again, you don't have to do that, but the moderated classes will be taught on a schedule. Uh, then phase two has its moderated classes. If a course number, by the way, has an initial behind it, that's an indication that that's a unique course in that path, and that kind of helps you see the paths. Uh, another key is, uh, a course number below 220 is a core course, and a course above 230 is a path course. Um, but you can see that on that model, um, it would be a 15-week commitment to a cohort recognizing not everyone will get done that fast, and some of the four instructors and uh, the, the two instructors and two assistants, the, the team of four, may have to hang on longer to give everybody a chance to get through. Uh, the numbers down below are just my way of tabulating and let you know how many modules are in each path. So total, military modules 26, cadet modules 23, uh, professional or advanced promotion 27, and new member modules 26. And um, most modules are 60 minutes long. Uh, there's one 90 minute that is only in the professional and new member. And that's on uh, a course on uh, leadership. Um, but uh, that's kind of a concept. So if I'm starting a new core every month, you can see right there that I will have, if they were on a 15 week schedule, I would have at least four cohorts going. If we assume that those that start in a cohort with level two part one, continue all the way through level two. After I hold an instructor for 15 weeks, I'm sure they're going to want a break. And that's how I came up with the number of instructors that I'm going to need for a year. Uh, as I said, so far I've processed over 20. Um, and I'm getting ready to make assignments for those that should start teaching next Tuesday. That's everything that I had, sir. I can take questions, but again, I still can't see this, the screen unless I stop presenting, I think. Not a problem, sir. We do have several questions that appeared in the group chat, so we'll just go ahead and start with those. The first one is um, a situation where a senior member has just completed level four, and under this new system, he wants to know would he get promoted to major? And the, the general question is, is the time and grade requirement gone? There seems to be a lot of questions regarding that. <laughs> no, the only thing that has changed in promotions is um, that you have to do level two part one to get that first promotion. Uh, as far as time and grades and levels, uh, those remain the same. Again, you notice there's a little difference in the content of the levels, uh, what you have to do to, to complete a level, but um, for promotion, that, that remains the same. Okay. And then kind of like a follow-up to that one, there was some questions about whether there would be demotions 
um, of grades for not being able to complete the next level within the designated time frame? No. Perfect. No, okay. no demotions for that. I'm sure that makes all of us breathe a very large sigh of relief. All right, um, and it looks like that's all of them that came through the chat. Chaplain Williams, did you get anything in the Moodle? Yes, I've got four of them that just showed up. Let me start bringing them up. And of course, Moodle is acting like Moodle, so it's a little pokey this evening. Well, our previous staffings of be accepted for the requirement to serve on a staff in education and training. For example, um, Jessica Parsons over here has been a director of several TLCs. She doesn't have to do that again. Uh, that is correct? To the best of my knowledge, that is correct. Right, that type of thing should carry on. Future direction for online education. I'm waiting for this one to come up. Would like your thoughts on how we at the squadron level might be able to organize education once a week for seniors attending our meetings. This is potentially a new venue to help us keep seniors engaged. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I see all kinds of opportunities for that. Um, not through the online as Val Yu sees it, but the online that we've been doing this college. Um, I can see where you work with your group or your wing education and training officer. And, and by the way, professional development officer is going away. Uh, it will be education and training officer. Uh, so just like CDIs are going to become CSS, I guess the PDO is going to become ETO. Um, but you get with your, say, your group or your wing, uh, ETO, and you guys say most of our units meet on, I don't know, Tuesday night. So Tuesday night at 8 o'clock, we're going to start knocking out the level three modules one at a time or we're gonna start knocking out the level two modules one at a time, or that sort of thing. And um, definitely, I, I see this as a real possibility. This again, to me, is a reason why I would like to see all of our chaplains and CDIs get certified as instructors at as many levels as possible, and for both online and for on site. Okay. And Shirley Rodriguez, you remember her from North Central Region? Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How do you forget Shirley once you've met her? You can't. Uh, wait a minute. Shirley and I are both Army NCOs. That's so true. But I we're think we were family before we were capped together. <laughs> yeah. Well, she was a sergeant major. How high did you make it? I only made it to sergeant first class, but they retired me after 10 years because I couldn't march anymore. <laughs> I understand that one, and I shouldn't pick on Shirley. Anyway, um, do I understand correctly that you may volunteer to present only one or two sessions in a level based on your availability? And do you have the option to request online only for your presentations or are you required to present in person as well as online? No, we, you are allowed to request only what you want, um, definitely. And so if I had someone that for level two um, only wanted to teach core values, I would add them into a cohort for that one, uh, that one module. But for on-site, definitely. You just need to work that out with the chair. Or for on-site education, you'd need to work that out with whoever is um, leading that education and training event. Perfect. Oh, new requirements with time and grade. Time and grade, same as it was, or it adjusted to 
match time and command position. That's actually a, a promotions question and not level um, professional education and training levels. Bo, would you like to tackle that or not? I need the question again, please. Okay, could you please clarify how the new requirements work with time and grade? Is time and grade the same as it was? Yes. Time and grade for promotions does not change. Good. Uh, looks like Jessica may have a couple of more questions that came in on chat. Um, and I'm trying to bring up a couple more questions. So let's pop back over to Jessica. I hope. Uh, I actually have my chat up now. So I see one, how do you get to be a certified instructor? Uh, you can go to the education and training page off of gocivilairpatrol.com and there is a link. I also saw that link pop up here in the chat window more than once um, and you can apply. You will need a resume and that resume needs to be a resume that emphasizes your teaching background, whether that be in Civil Air Patrol or not. But that's what we're looking for on the resume is what instructional uh, experience do you have. Then it's a matter of time for us to get through and review uh, those requests. And some of the chairs are doing personal interviews ahead of time. I have not been doing that. I've been relying on the paperwork that I see. Uh, then we, once we decide that yes, we will bring you in, um, we move you to a system where national goes out and gets approval from your unit commander, your wing commander, and your region commander. Um, I've noticed very few people to ever be rejected at any of those levels. Um, but once that is done, then we're notified. The individual chairs are notified. Here's a new list. Go out and find your people that have been vetted and approved. And you get um, access to the Volunteer University Instructor Training Course. The first seven modules are that are online taken at your own speed. Uh, after I see that most people in level two uh, and, and Colonel Bryant and I work together for all the level two, but once the level chairs see that they have a group of their people that have completed that course, then we set up a virtual session and we spend some time together going over instructional techniques and other things unique to our levels. And if that all goes well, then we move you into the queue and that's it. Uh, we enter you in e-services. That's the process. Cool. Uh, I don't have anything else in Moodle. Um, I would like to, if you're not offended, call this one down. Uh, we could continue questions, but I would like to start my session at 45 after, if that would be acceptable. Uh, so we will be technically on break, but I will be um, ready to go um, at 45.